glory fire. Glory dash fire. In Exodus chapter 24, verse 17, it said, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. The, the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5, God speaking, he said, I, for I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. The fire of God is a department of the glory of God. Or say it another way, the fire of God is a depiction of the glory of God. God frequently manifests his glory in the form of fire. He appears in his glory as fire. For the glory is the nature of God. And God is a devouring fire. According to Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24, our God for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 3. The Lord, understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. He said, for our God is a consuming fire. So the glory is fire. The fire is glory. It is glory fire. It is fire glory. So what we have come into this conference to seek for is to move from fire to fire. From glory to glory. From glory fire to glory fire. How do we walk in the glory fire? Because that is the baseline. Before we can talk of moving from glory to glory, we have to establish the baseline of existence in the glory fire. The first is through word impact. Or encounter the impact of the word encounter with the word is a trigger for the glory fire or the fire of the glory Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9 popular scripture Jeremiah said I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shot up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. His word was located in my heart as a fire shot up in my bones. Jeremiah chapter 23 and in verse 29. Where he said, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, 
and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Hear this. The word of God is a spiritual glorifier generator. You may have a generator in your house that generates electricity. But the word of God is a spiritual glorifier generator. If you want me to say it in another way, I will say that the word of God is a spiritual fire originator. Beloved brothers and sisters, there is nothing that sets the spirit of man aflame like Rema. The spirit of man is naturally flammable, is flammable, is flammable, highly flammable, and it can be quickened into flames by a fresh injection of Rema. Help that man there. All of a sudden, fresh insight jumps into your spirit. All of a sudden, fresh light jumps into your spirit. All of a sudden, God quickens a scripture. It jumps into your spirit and instantly your spirit is set aflame. And you proceed with glorify. So to run out of Rema is to run out of fire. To run out of Rema is to run out of glory fire. To run out of Rema is to run out of fire. It's like running out of diesel. It's like running out of fuel. When a generator runs out of fuel, the power is cut. When the spirit of man runs out of Rema, fire dies. You run down in glory fire when you run out of the world, when you run out of Rema. This can come, this Rema can come out of the Bible, the raw Bible. And I want to encourage you to please ensure that you, hold, you, you have this raw Bible all the time. He said, This book of the law, not this iPad of the law. Not this telephone of the law. Well, I know that you can have the Bible in your iPad. I have to. My iPad is here. I know you can have the Bible in your phone. I have to. All my phones have the Bible. But we must have this raw book. There are things you can do with this raw book that you may not be doing the other one. And for your information, the devil, I'm sure, has a strategy of making this book to go out of circulation. It's the number one bestseller in the world. But he wants now to just take us off the raw book and then begin to go into the scientific things and then maybe suddenly just has a way of just deleting it completely. This book of the law. I'm preaching right there with the book by, raw Bible and the iPad. Both of them are there. When I'm slow, when it's a bit slow to, to look for a scripture, I can quickly look at it from here. Am I communicating at all? But it can come out of this raw book. It can come out of a DVD you are listening to. It can come out of a CD. All you need is to just let Rema jump into your spirit. Is God speaking to somebody here? Let Rema jump into your spirit. Let something jump into your spirit. Out of one sentence, you can get 20 revelations. Out of one statement that your, your pastor will make or, or, your, or your teacher will make. Out of just one statement, you can get 20 lights that can set your spirit aflame. And as I preach here tonight, I prophesy to somebody, your spirit is already catching fire. It's already being set aflame. Shout power! Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That was number one. Through word impact or encounter. Number two is through consistent prayer and communion with God. Consistent prayer and communion with God. 
it is to be confirmed that the place of prayer is the place of fire in Acts chapter 1 and in verse 14 Acts chapter 1 and in verse 14 it said this all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women they continued in prayer they continued in prayer they did not slow down in prayer they continued in prayer and then in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 Mahashato Kabbalah in chapter 2 verse 1 and then they continued in prayer they were all in one accord and the day of Pentecost was come and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as unto fire and it sat upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with as the spirit gave them utterance to be playing with prayer is to be playing down your fire every time the devil wants to attack your fire he attacks your prayer life for one reason or the other you are not praying as you are meant to pray anymore for one reason you, are, you, you got so busy you, 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 many things replace the real real uninterrupted prayer listen to me when you pray you are camping with jehovah and who is jehovah he is the consuming fire and you can't hang around fire Help him on there. You cannot hang around fire and be cold. You cannot hang around fire and not be fire yourself. Praying and communion with the consuming fire is a sure way for the permanent, persistent, consistent maintenance of glory fire. Especially praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. It is not just a prayer language given to us. It is a fan, a fan. <sighs> It's a fan. It's a fan into flames. Fan into flames. In Second Timothy chapter one, verse six, and in verse seven, he said, "And wherefore I put you to remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, which is put in you by, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That word, stir up." Another translation said, fan, fan into flame. Continue to fan until the flame is made. Was that not the Living Bible translation or the New Living Translation? That's why I remind you that you fan into flames. Fan into flames. The spiritual gift that God gave you when I laid my hands upon you. And what is that? It was the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost. Fan it into flame. Fan it into flame. Pray yourself until you come out with redness of eyes. Pray until your spirit is hot. Pray until you generate the heart of a volcano. Pray until you develop the voice of thunder. Is God speaking to somebody here? Pray until you are wired rugged. Pray until you are a mobile tornado. Is God speaking to somebody here? Shout glory! I remember when we were in Ghana last weekend, I just remembered the fire conference we used to hold on campus. I remember one of the, the handbills, something like this, ensure that you are there because there shall be a sure distribution of fire. Take your own. 
Take your own. Shaw, 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 Shaw. Is God speaking to somebody here? You cannot be a man of prayer and not be a man of fire. You cannot be a woman of prayer and not be a woman of glory. Is God speaking to somebody here? There is something that is about your face and about your countenance and about your life. If you are a person of prayer that is unmistaken, that even principalities and powers... recognize there is not there is there is a shortage of glory in the body of Christ because there is a shortage of prayer there is a shortage of glory in the church because there is a shortage of prayer are you hearing what I'm saying here a shortage of prayer a shortage of prayer a shortage of prayer there is a shortage of fire on the pulpit because there is a shortage of prayer for, from the pit occupier. I struggled to sleep by 12 last night. And then by 3, sleep disappeared. Wow. I was just telling my wife today that by 6 a.m., I was battling to sleep back. And I'm meant to be in the service by nine. You let me try and sleep and set alarm clock for at least maybe two hours more. That, that says, I woke the alarm clock. I rang before I rang. And it was, I wasn't, I wasn't sitting playing. Today, whatever has decayed in your prayer altar, the decadence is arrested now. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. Whatever has decayed in your prayer altar, I, I declare the decadence is over right now. When the Lord wants to move you to a higher dimension of ministry, he releases new, fresh, heavenly support. Apart from giving you fresh mantle, he deploys higher ranking angelic forces because they are in ranks with different assignments. There was one angel that could not fight the prince of Persia that needed help, he needed reinforcement from Angel Michael, who came and cleared the man and went his way. They are in ranks. The Lord showed me tonight that higher ranking angels are about to be released for some people tonight. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> hey! For some people's assignment, some people's assignment, they not necessarily pastoral ministry, but for your life, your destiny, your ministry, your assignment, because it is time to shift to the next level, the next level of result, the next level of miracles, the next level of signs, the next level of wonders, the next level of manifestations. Somebody shout glory! Somebody shout fire! Take your seat. I said through word impact and encounter and then through consistent prayer and communion with God and then number two, three, through authentic worship. Authentic worship. Authentic worship. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 to verse 14, while they, they, and it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endure it forever that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord. So 
that a priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. That is a glory fire that filled the house right there as the worship was on. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 to verse 5. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly and one cried unto another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the door and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with the smoke the smoke of the fire that was generated then said woe is me Long story made sure suddenly there came the coal of fire that accompanied the worship. And then I said, woe is me, for I am undone, O Lord. And then I said, woe is me, for I am undone, O Lord. Please with your coal, cleanse me. Make me ready for your use. Please with your call, cleanse me. Make me ready for. And then I said, and then I said, woe is me. For I am undone, O Lord. And then I said, woe is me. For oh, I am undone, O oh Lord. Please, with your coal, cleanse me. Make me ready for your use. Please, with the coal, cleanse me. Make me ready. Authentic worship. Authentic worship. Doing it yourself or basking in the climate of it by anointed DVDs, CDs, and so forth, it catapults you to a glory fire realm. One of our pastors sits here tonight, he testified in his presence, volume, I think, five, volume four. He was playing. And he said he listened to track one, track two, track three. By the time he, he entered track four, he said the he has never felt like that in his life. Power lifted him from the chair he was sitting. By track three, he was already getting electrified. With you, Lord, I can be naked and not ashamed. With you, Lord, I can be open and have no fear. For I found in you a friend that I can trust. That is why you will remain my great physician. And with you, Lord, I can be naked and not ashamed. For I found in you a friend that I can trust. I can trust you, Lord. That is why you will remain my great physician. I worshipped and worshipped and saturated my life in worship one day. And that, and I mean, permanent lifestyle. One day. I had a revelation in the, in the night and I was lying in the place that I recognized to be the throne room. You know, when you see, when you see revelations, celestial revelations, nobody tells you where you are or tells you where you are seen or what you are seeing. You know, I was lying on the floor, face down in worship. And I saw the ground was bringing out worship. Carpet was bringing out worship. Flower, everything was bringing out. The worship was coming from everywhere. And 
was hearing familiar songs that I'm familiar with here on it. And I said, oh, really? These songs, is this the place where they originated from? I heard Terry McCallum's song. I heard some Michael W. Smith songs. And I was hearing them, hearing. They were coming from the ground, coming from everywhere. Beloved brothers and sisters, not every song originated here. And when you connect with songs that originated from there, they connect you with there. Uh, they, they just connect you with there. They just connect you with the other side. They just clothe you with the climate of that place. They clothe you with, with, the, with the, they, they just link you up with that realm. They just link you up with the events of that realm. Beloved brothers and sisters, I prophesy a revival in the worship life of someone here. A revolution in the worship life of someone here. I prophesy a release of fresh inspiration fresh sounds from heaven in the name of Jesus authentic worship you connect the glory fire number four through being on the move for God on the move for God in Joel chapter 2 verse 1 to let's say 4 he said blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand a day of darkness and of gloominess a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains a great people and a strong there has not ever been the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Said a fire devoured before them, that is their emotion, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is at the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yeah, and nothing shall escape them. Being on assignment for God. Being on the move. Especially the soul winning move. Equals in front and back with fire. That is your front is burning, your back is burning, yourself you are burning. If the fire is before you and the fire is behind you and you are inside the fire, it means yourself you are fire. They were not sitting, the fire was not, they were not sitting down. A fire was before them, behind them a flame bonnet. As they move, the fire moves. As they move, the fire moves. Do you understand? Because God is the consuming fire and he moves with movers. What did I say? God is the consuming fire and he does what? He moves with movers. Acts chapter 16 verse 20 and they went and the Lord went they went forth and the Lord went with them confirming the word with signs and wonders following I was preaching at a market I'm in the spare pass market one of them and there were miracles happening on the roadside there. Because as I went, the Lord went. There was fire burning there. Some people were asking me, sir, you leave such a big auditorium to go and be preaching to two, three people on the street? I told them, I said, it appears to be like I feel more at home there than inside here. I feel more because I dance on the road as much as the ground will permit all manner of things happening by the fire on the roadside. Blind eyes, deaf ears, everything. Now, a man was there whose wife was deaf in Nyanya. He was there on the ground. His wife was deaf in Nyanya. As he saw other people testifying, he decided to call his house and realized the wife's ear opened on the spot. The 
wife wasn't there. He was the one that was there where we were preaching. He said, I just called my house now. And my wife's ears has opened. As I was hearing the testimony here, I decided to find out how is she doing. Ear open. Because when you move, he moves. And when he moves, fire moves. Because he is the consuming fire. Am I communicating at all? Don't sit down as an executive Christian. Don't sit down as a CEO pastor. Don't sit down as an executive Christian. Don't sit down as a chief executive officer pastor. Big man pastor. No. Going to all the world is not just for church goers. It's for everybody including pastors. Going to the world of the sinners. Going to the world of the drunkards. Going to the world of the smokers. Going to the world of the, of the, of the, of the prostitutes. Going to all the world. I'll talk about that more. Because we are going to talk about shifting from glory to glory in the realm of church explosion. Am I communicating at all? Be on the move. There is a fire that I personally feel on the field. There is a, it just puts you on your toes. There is, you don't know the joy of living until you know the joy of touching lives. You know the joy of touching life physically. And whatever be your assignment. What? Right, that's the Apple, Apple Crusade up there. That guy born deaf in the ear. Right? The people are doing their own. I didn't ask you to do this. Hallelujah. You know, in the late 70s, early 80s, th those who were born again at that time, it was almost a crime to move out without track in your pocket. Am I communicating? You, you felt like you committed a sin. If you entered a bus and you didn't preach, or a taxi, you didn't preach, or money crowd, something, you will, be, you will be condemning yourself for the next few days. Supposing somebody died there and go to hell now. Won't God hold me? For today's Christians, just life of ease and complacence. Come to church, clap, dancing, receive prophecies, go back home. Next neighbor, you don't care about their souls. How can you have fire when you are not on the move? When you are not on the go? God is calling someone here tonight. There is somebody who used to be passionate in evangelism. Somebody came all the way from the, was it the UK, ma? From Germany for one month. She said she heard me talking about evangelism on the television. So she decided to come here and, and do like three weeks evangelism before the convention. So she is evangelizing. How many souls? 16 souls she won. Yes. She came. She wants the, the opportunity of doing this thing practically. Somebody say amen. Is God speaking to somebody here? Anybody want a glory fire tonight? I prophesy that glory fire is coming upon you tonight. Say a louder amen. Say the loudest amen. Numbers five, where and I will be true very shortly because of our time. Number five is true habitual sacrifice. True habitual sacrifice. Every man of sacrifice is a man of fire, glory fire. Every woman of sacrifice is a woman of fire, a woman of glory fire. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 1. In the dedication of the temple. When Solomon made an end of praying. The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. The fire came, consumed, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. There are many people calling down fire where there is no sacrifice on the altar. Hello? There are many 
people asking God, I need fire. I need a glory fire. I need fire. But the altar is empty of sacrifice. The children of Aaron, what was their name? Nadab and Abihu. That was what they did. I think that was Numbers chapter 9. I think the last verse or so, or chapter 10 verse 1. They offered sacrifice with strange fire. They, were, they came to burn incense with strange fire. They didn't bring any sacrifice. They only came with, to burn strange incense with strange fire. The altar was empty. The fire came. And Nadab and Abiyah, the sons of Aaron, took it out of them in censor and put fire there and put incense there and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there was nothing on the altar. So there went down fire and the fire was looking for sacrifice. He didn't find. So he ate them. He ate them. He ate them. You see, the word of God cannot return back the same. God doesn't can release the fire and the fire will return and say, I didn't find anything. He must find something. He must consume something. He must eat something. There are so many people who are almost walking about like dead people. Ministry is dead. Everything is gone because they are calling for fire where there is no sacrifice. So that you don't endanger your life. Ensure that sacrifice is intact before you demand for fire. Is God speaking to anybody here? The prophets of Baal caught themselves, caught themselves, caught themselves. Nothing happened. But Elijah came, he repaired the altar. Arrange the sacrifice in order. First Kings chapter 18. From verse 35 we may read. Or 36. And they walked around round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass. At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. That Elijah the prophet came near. And said Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. And that I am your servant. And that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. That the people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that you have turned their back, heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell. And consumed the burnt sacrifice. And the wood. And the stones. And the dust. And, the, and licked up the water that was in the trench. That was the glory fire. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Every man's fire is directly proportional to the intensity of his sacrifice. Directly proportional. Directly proportional to the intensity of his sacrifices in God. The realm of glory you will walk in is directly proportional to the level of sacrifice you are walking in. That is why you cannot ask for Bishop Uyedeko's anointing until you have offered Bishop Uyedeko's sacrifice. That's why you cannot ask for the mantle of until you have sacrificed to the capacity of Bishop Pastor E. Adeboe. Somebody asked Archbishop Peter Hose, I said, Give me a double portion of your anointing. And he said, You want it? He said, Father, give him a double portion of everything I have passed through so that he can get the anointing. The man said, No, son, that's not what I'm asking for. It's all right. Then you are not ready for it. See, before Elisha could ask for the talking about the pastor eating every day as if he has covenant with food. As for me, I'm not sure I will gain weight in this life. Maybe it's an, another life. 
if there is. No, no. <laughs> no. It's not possible. It disappears in a hurry. By the, by, by, the, by the time you have not eaten by 4 p.m. and you are not fasting, that is not a fasting day. You didn't remember to eat, or the work was too much, or you were praying such, such that you, you haven't eaten. That you, are, you didn't say, I'm fasting. My daughter was telling me yesterday, she said she doesn't remember the last time she saw me eat breakfast. That I can't remember the last time I saw you eating breakfast. I said, I, me, myself. <laughs> I, I tell my wife, I said, can I eat breakfast now? <laughs> and that is four o'clock. <laughs> it's three o'clock. I need to eat my breakfast. You don't understand what I'm saying. I am not saying it is a law. I'm not saying it is a rule. But there is a level of donation you will donate yourself to the task of your life that it will burn off unnecessary sleep, unnecessary eating, unnecessary many things. Take your seat. There are some of my incomes my wife did not record. So I say, why didn't you record this income? He said, because none of it enters our hand. 100% of it goes to church. So there is no need for the record. I said, still record it. <laughs> I said, still, 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 still. He said, he said I'm not talking of 10 naira. I'm not talking of 10 million. He said, he said, all of it. Go straight to church. So what is the need for having the record? I say record it as income. And then record it as. As it came, it went. And I am not saying it to impress nobody. Because until examples are shared, principles are not understood. All that I'm saying, I'm not talking to anybody struggling with paying tight. You haven't started. Whether you are a clergyman or a, 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 a pulpit, whatever, you have not started at all. When tight, tight is a challenge. You haven't started. Sacrifice is raw fire. There is no need to go into detail of the kind of things that somebody has embarked on in time past. No need, even currently. No need. But you sacrifice of time, sacrifice of resources, sacrifice of food, sacrifice of substance. I'm trusting God with my wife to finish a church building from our pocket this year, foundation to roofing. One or two before they were trusting God for it. It's already in process. Another one. No, others, were, others have been built since. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Sacrifice. Lord, is there any area of my life where I am holding back? This particular construction. The only thing that I didn't give was to drop my body into the offering. That's myself. That's offering basket is passing. Can I enter inside? This, constru this construction. A money we have been keeping aside in the savings for a long time. Many, many, many zeros. We wrote to the bank. We want to remove it. The bank visited us on the spot. Like any challenge. Two banks. Any, pro any challenge? So no. Program. Pro Project is on and this thing must enter inside. Now the bank begged that the money should be left till the end of the month so it can reflect in that month's account for them. So it was left. And then it was pulled out. Bam! Until the balance was zero, zero. 
<laughs> an account that was in many zeros, many plenty zeros. Plenty zeros. I stopped there. Not six, not seven. I stopped there. Plenty zeros. Bam! After a while, another one. Bam! Why will you tell others to sacrifice and you are not? Who will, who should hear you when you haven't heard what you are saying? <laughs> who should hear you? Then we are constructing, tomorrow you came with a new car. We are doing this, we need more money. You came with a, 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 another, you, you, you bought three more new cars. Uh, please, people give, ensure that you give very well. And then... Um, <laughs> You are, just, you are just arriving with change of cloth and change of everything and, and there is nothing, no, no, no reflection. Papoyedeko said, some, somebody, a pastor in America told him, asked him, why are people in our church not giving? He told the, the, the pastor, he said, because they don't trust you. You know, he's very wrong. Why is our church, why are people not giving our church? Say because they can't trust you. That is why they are not giving. If they will trust you, they will be given. He, then he said, for example, the car you are driving now is bigger than your size. <laughs> say it's bigger than your size. He said in our country, pastors who have church of your congregation size don't drive this kind of car. So by the time they see you drive something like this, they are convinced that if they bring money, you will use it to buy another expensive car. So they don't trust you. Because he didn't apologize. He just say his, say his own hoha. Somebody say amen. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Was that not life? True, habitual. I like you to don't wait until the church calls for sacrifice. The Bible said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Let your life be sacrifice in motion. Let your life be mobile sacrifice. A continuous sacrifice. Call sacrifice on yourself. And see what God will do for you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Number seven. True men, oh, sorry, six. Through maintaining focus and vision. Focus and vision gives birth to glory fire. The fire of the army of Joel was rooted in focus. You remember the Bible said in verse 3 that a fire devoured before them. Joel chapter 2 verse 3. A fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burned. They were a people that moved in fire. But something, there was vision that drove them. In Joel chapter 7, they be part of it. He said, he said, chapter 2 verse 7 rather, chapter 2 verse 7. He said, they shall walk everyone in his ways, in his path. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. They shall face their front. They know what they are out for. They are not trying to copy another person. They are not struggling to imitate another vision. They are not trying to compete with somebody else. They are not trying to do something because somebody did it. They are, they are focused on what God has called them to do. And as they focus on what God called them to do, the fire burns. You remember Matthew chapter 6 verse 22? He said, if your eye, he said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. If your eye is single, your body shall be lighted. If your eye is single. Celebrate what God is doing in the life of your friend, but don't imitate or compete with it. 
Draw inspiration. Let it inspire you. But let it not move you into competition. Am I communicating with somebody at all? Let it inspire you. And then wake up with vision. When a person wakes up in the morning and sleeps at night and he's passing through the day without knowing why he's passing through that day. Why? Question is, you ate breakfast this morning to achieve what? You ate lunch to give you energy to do what? You will sleep tonight to be refreshed, to wake up in the morning to achieve what? And you, you have to remind yourself of why you are alive. Because, because it is very, very easy to pass through life without knowing why. No, some people were running sometime. Running, 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 running. Everybody join. Everybody join. Everybody join. They were running. Around at the point, somebody asked them, excuse me, sir, why are we running? <laughs> His friend told him, say, me, myself, I'm not aware. That's, that is how bandwagon effect. Just write the vision. Make it plain. Just once in a while. You woke up in the morning. Just once or maybe before you slept at night. I am on earth to reflect his glory, for example, and to touch as many lives as possible, for example. I am on earth to spread and extend the kingdom, for example. And at the end of the day, mark my generation and meet my creator with re results, for example. Whatever is a statement that captures why you are alive or what you are doing or your particular assignment. Might not be too detailed. Just, just remind yourself. He said that he may run that read it. That is, he says it injects you fire. It gives you, it, it, just, it just gives you fresh gumption. Somebody say amen. For a long time, I write on the top of my notebook. Why? You know the reason why we write objective of preaching, when we say objective? So that we don't derail. What is the objective of it? Because you can, you, can, you, can, you can just say every... You see, there are some people who, by the time they finish preaching, you didn't know what you heard. You have heard many things, but you heard nothing. Somebody was brought to Paul Young Gicho's church to preach. He came from America. And he began to preach about uh, the issue of Germany and the issue of this and that and that and world politics and so on. Paul Young Gicho said, our people don't need this. <laughs> they don't, the people are in need. They need help. They need prayer. They need deliverance. The man didn't hear him. So Paul Young, and Paul Young Gicho was the interpreter. So the man continued preaching and Paul Yongicho began to preach to the people in his language. <laughs> if, the, if the man says something, he will say what he wants the people to hear. <laughs> the man said, so like I'm saying, Germany is a terrible country. And they didn't, he said, so ensure that you connect with God because that is what will change your life. Two messages from one altar at the center because he won the man, the man refused. He was just talking general talk as if he was a social studies or general knowledge or history. And the man decided to preach to the people what he knew the people needed. Pastors, don't let anybody come to the altar of your ministry to do what they like. Because God will hold you responsible. Responsible for what people do or fail to do. 
I don't care no matter what is the rank of such a person. He may be older than you in every realm. But you have the responsibility on that altar. I've been to places before. They said, uh, while you preach, at, at the end of the preaching, please raise for us offering. I said, no, I'm not here for that. Well, the reason why they may be asking may not be bad. Maybe, it, that, maybe they have a legitimate financial need. But I am not there. They didn't call me to come and raise offering. And that wasn't the call, part of my dictation for the call. Go ye into all the world and assist me to raise funds. In the course of ministry, re receiving resources will come. And then I am here today, this is my first time preaching to the people. You are asking me, I should ask them to, to raise offering. What did I do against you that you hate me like this? So that they say that man who came, he preached to us and took our money. I was invited somewhere. To come and preach. Unknown to me, the invitation card had gate fee. They had already done publicity. That uh, the, the pastor will have a special meeting with some group of it, uh, something, something. So uh, admission is so and so and so and so. Somebody said, he saw it and he said, he got to me and said, I know this is not your operation and your practice. I said, God forbid. Looked at the man and said, what did I do against you? I am not coming. And tell the people, you are the one who put the gate for you. Am I communicating? Because if you don't know what you are doing with your life, people will give you what they think you should do. The most Fireful people on the earth are the most focused. The most glory filled are the most focused. You are not in ambiguity. You know what your life is about. You know where you are headed and you know what you want out of life. You know what is expected of you and you know what you expect of people. You know. Someone say amen. Somebody say it louder amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. <laughs> Somebody say the loud most amen. Can you say amen at the top of your voice? Did anybody receive anything tonight? I maintain focus. Before you sleep tonight, ask yourself, why am I? If you don't know at all, you say, these people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. I am here. To reveal to my generation the greatness of my God. And to attract to my generation as many as will follow me to make heaven. I am here to make a mark for the kingdom. Let it be in your mind. Every, whether you are a student in school, wherever you are, let it be in your mind. Let there be a focus. Let there be a vision. Let there be the why, why you are. While I was in the university, I ensured that Either a passage of scripture or something occupied my mind per time. I forbade that the mind was vacant. I, I, there was so, and now I say in the university because now there is so much uh, of uh, church planting and this and that that comes up. Just ensure that the mind was not vacant. Through maintaining focus and vision. And finally... Through fire impartation. That is, call it glorifier impartation. Through glorifier impartation. Where someone who operates in the realm of that glory and that fire connects with your life and everything changes. Look at the pastor from Adamawa who testified from Yola in the morning. Five members came into contact. Bam! Everything changed. Built a church. 
over eight years, now seven branches spread across. Travel to the U.S., travel to Israel, and just at the, on the platter of gold by one encounter. Look at the man who just came now, who went to that village. Believe it or not, his life has changed. We are going to send people with him to authenticate and validate the place as foundational for what we'll be doing. Already somebody has dropped a check, has made a commitment of six zeros for whatever is to be done. You know, all that happened was one encounter that God brought him into connection with glory fire. And under 24 hours, everything just changed like that. Under 24 hours. pastor comes from Angola. He came all the way to Chicago to meet me where I was ministering at the Winston's ministry. He came to, he heard I was ministering there. He flew from Africa to Angola. He was pastoring one small, tiny church. Africa to, sorry, to US. They brought him to me. Pastor Philemon brought him to me. I don't know if they are here now. Their plane should have landed. And I prayed with him. He returned back to his country and everything changed. One small church. Now that church is a, a dominant church in the city, in the nation. It's running many, many services. Four per Sunday from a tiny church. Last time he met me, he said, can I pray for him? Or rather that they have a lot of problem with flying, that they have to fly from Angola to South Africa four hours, then fly from South Africa back across to their country five hours before flying to Nigeria. So before they can go and come, it's like you have so many hours. And Amen. From there straight to Nigeria is only three hours. Yes, but no direct flight. So they fly down to South Africa and then fly back up there before moving. And I said to him, you will be, since you will be coming, there has to be direct flight. So the direct flight is now established. He just called me now, texted that direct flight straight to Nigeria, to Lagos, to Abuja, commences in two months' time by their national carrier. Prophetic word. Even commanding airline movement for the sake of one person. Somebody say amen. You know that the department of Elijah was fire. Take your seat. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11, when the man to fail, as they went on and talked, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, horses of fire, he parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, the horsemen thereof. He saw him no more. He took hold of his own clothes, rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Ay, 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 ay. Do you know that when your father's mantle fall on you, his fire also falls for you? You know That his manifestations also falls for you. And the spiritual forces that work with him. Because eventually, chariots of fire that carried Elijah home, some of them returned back 
to continue with Elisha. And they multiplied. We saw one chariot of fire and horsemen, one. My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, chariot. But when it came to Elisha, it was chariots of fire. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 16. Elisha's servant was afraid that they were surrounded. And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray you open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of what? Horses and what? Chariots. Of fire roundabout, full of horses of fire, chariots of fire, roundabout Elisha. For his father, a chariot was available. For him, chariots. Stand up on your feet. If we stop here. We didn't stop too early. Chariots. Don't copy just the tongue of your father. Because there are people who copy everything including. Don't. Don't just copy the coat. <laughs> One lady said she saw me in the dream. And I was wearing a coat, not a suit, that it was a coat. <laughs> very, very big. And pulled the coat and enveloped her in the coat. She emphasized coat. The mantle. <laughs> you remember, you know the, the laboratory coat that doctors and lab scientists wear, all the way overalls, like mechanics and so on. It was a coat. Don't just look for the physical coat, physical shoe. Thank God for the dance. Thank God you lent it. But if you wear the cloth and you don't have the mantle, nothing. You can speak the language, but you can't speak the fire. They wanted to translate, transcribe sinners in the hands of an angry God of Jonathan Edwards. The me message he preached and people were quickened. Wanted to transcribe it. He asked the transcriber, I said, The fire and the thunder that came in the world, will it enter the book? He was very concerned. <laughs> Hallelujah. Chariots of fire. He said, That's why I told you tonight that there, is, there are new angelic rankings that are about to be allocated. And it is time. For you to pray. This is the baseline in which this conference is starting from. The glory fire. Let me arrive at this baseline first. Before we talk of glory to glory. This baseline first. This baseline. I want authentic spirituality. Huh? Yes, it's the baseline. I want authentic spirituality. I want, I want... I want, I want to mark this generation. And I want you to know, people, that God is at work by his mercies and by divine privilege. This center is one center among others globally that something unusual is sparking and blanketing the earth. If we don't say that, it is not humility. That something on you is blanketing. Something unusual. People having strange encounters in different countries. It's a new season. I'd like you to live 
lift up your two hands and thank the Lord for the word you heard tonight, this word on glory fire. If you give me another 15 minutes, we'll, we'll be true. I'm going to close earlier than yesterday, so please let there be no movement. Lift up your hands and lift up your voice and let's appreciate him for tonight. Let's appreciate him for tonight. Let's appreciate his mercy. Let's appreciate his goodness. Let's appreciate his love. Let's honor him. Let's worship him. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Appreciate him.